The Gathering of the Juggalos has become one of the most infamous music festivals in modern day. Featuring plenty of different rap groups and underground music thrown by the Insane Clown Posse, it has gained a reputation of being not only one of the most vile, but also one of the funnest music festivals that you can go to. However, a lot of people say a lot of things about the Gathering of the Juggalos. Is it true? Today, I'm going to show you guys exactly what to expect when you go to the Gathering of the Juggalos. That's going to be the time lapse screen. Woo! <laughs> On day one, we decided to wake up early to pack some clothes and get some bags of snacks together. We got like bags of chips and peanut butter sandwiches, not to mention a lot of Fago. Fago is a necessity for the gathering of the Juggalos. Once we were all done, we hit the road, and in just a few hours, we arrived at Legend Valley. After finding a parking spot, we got our wristbands as well as a program, and officially entered the gathering of the Juggalos. The first thing you always gotta do is hit the merch tent, as Insane Clown Posse has the merch game on lock. We grabbed a hockey jersey and a baseball jersey, as well as the 2023 Gathering shirts. We walked around a little bit to check out the scenery, but then I had to take a leak. However, one thing about the Gathering is they're said to have some of the grossest porta potties of any music festival. Hell, even The Simpsons have made reference to these toilets. If I ever see that car again, I'm going to freeze them, chop them up into ice cubes, and scoop them into the urinal trough at the gathering of the Juggalos. So, we decided to pick one random porta potty, and over the course of this video, you'll see the progression of this toilet over the course of four days. We walked around for a little bit more to check out the food and rides, but we took a quick trip back to the car to ditch the merch we bought. After that, we went back for our first official act. The first act we saw was Clockwork E, an underground rap group from Ohio. I saw these guys open for the Three-Headed Monster Tour a few months back, and I was really into what they had to offer. These guys are still somewhat new, but I have a good feeling that good things are coming for Clockwork E. We also got to watch some guys next to us nail the crowd with water balloons, and we took some shots while watching it. After that was Hex, who's pretty good, but was then followed by an artist named Kung Fu Vampire. When I originally listened to Kung Fu Vampire, he looked like this. Instead, we got this guy. Despite being disappointed at the new look, he still had a hell of a show. He brought out some fire spinners and some other people, and the crowd was just really into it. I also think it's important to point out that people throw lots of shit here, but it actually means they're having fun. If you can't beat them, join them. We walked back around for a little bit, and then checked out the porta potty. It was still relatively clean, but there was some new wonderful graffiti on the wall. We made it back to the main stage, where a large crowd formed for the final main stage act of night one and that would be the rap group Nottis. Nottis is a rap group consisting of one of my favorite rappers of all time, Isham, as well as Mastermind. The group is best known for their horrorcore style and is a highly respected group in the world of Juggalo music. The group originally consisted of three members with the addition of TNT. However, in December of 2014, TNT passed on in a car accident. Nottis paid respect to their fallen homie and so did the crowd. One guy even brought a large cardboard cutout of TNT. Ultimately, Nottis rocked the crowd and was a perfect way to close out main stage for night one. Bathroom update, someone pissed all over the place. We grabbed a funnel cake and headed over to a sideshow called The Juggalesque Show. This show was a burlesque show featuring Juggalettes. After that, we tried to go watch whatever the fuck this is, but honestly, we were pretty tired. So we headed back to the hotel and called it quits for day one. We started with some breakfast, but quickly realized that the rocks by main stage had destroyed my shoes. And while we went to buy some, it started to rain. Luckily, it did lighten up by the time we got back, but the toilet was still muddy as hell and also there was new graffiti. The first act we checked out was Heathen Sun. However, it felt like we were in the Twilight Zone because a bunch of random shit started to happen. Such as the cowardly lion clutching his fago, this lady holding a dog, a dude carrying a table umbrella like a regular umbrella. The cowardly lion made a friend and then a fleet of vehicles just drove through the crowd. I basically spent this whole set just people watching, but after that, my guy Willie Hayes took the stage. Willie Hayes is pretty great, and it was a lot of fun seeing him live for the first time. I took some shots during a set and had a blast. But after that set, the crowd got packed really quickly, because up next was the wet t-shirt contest. Now I know this is the part you guys want to see, so I'm going to talk a little slower and take my time to give you guys a good idea of what the wet t-shirt contest was like. 
This contest was hosted by Clownvis, who's a gathering superstar. These women took the stage to shake what their mama gave them and to win the grand prize of $500 and an amulet. Long story short, these women were in it to win it. There was tons of different body types for individuals with all kinds of preferences to ponder at. By the end of the show, there was a lot of naked women on stage. Fuck, even some practically having sex with one another. It goes without saying that the crowd was really into this. Yeah, this isn't really the kind of shit I usually get into, but I I had to go for you guys. Yeah, I, I made the sacrifice for you guys. Fuck you guys for making me go to this, by the way. After watching that, I felt like we needed church, so we stopped by the Juggalos for Jesus tent to grab a fago and talk to some of the workers. But when we started walking back in, there were some security guards at the gate screaming at each other. The first act we saw on main stage was Sponge. Sponge is a rock band from Detroit and was probably the act that stood out the most on this year's lineup. Despite that, they still had a great set, even though there was less people in the crowd compared to the other acts. We grabbed some ice cream, and when we got back, Arrested Development had taken the stage. They had a soulful hip-hop act, and this girl especially killed it. Another great performance on the main stage. After their set, I gotta watch this guy dance and have fun. Full disclaimer, I asked him if I could record him, and he said yes. However, he was obviously tripping on something, so that's why I blurred his face. But after that was the now infamous Riff Raff set. Riff Raff took the stage, and within 60 seconds, he was already noticing how people were throwing stuff. He started hiding behind his DJ, and hiding behind the curtain, popping out on each side every now and again. Now listen, I don't really know what to do when you're an artist on stage and people are throwing shit at you, but I do know you probably shouldn't say what his DJ said. Yo, yo, we can't keep playing that, guys. Yo, 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 you're hitting the equipment up here with shit, guys. Hey, man. I see... After he said that, all bets were off. The stage was bombarded with bottles. Security even came out to protect them, and Riff Raff spent a lot of time hiding behind them. He even attempted to bring out the rapper Ouija Mac to win the crowd over, but was ultimately unsuccessful. After only about 15 minutes of performing, Riff Raff walked off the stage. And after that, we just kind of hung out waiting for the final act of night two. The final act was the legends themselves, the insane clown posse. This set was a recreation of their original 1999 tour, Wicked Clowns from Outer Space, which was one of the most famous tour sets they've ever done. If you're not a fan of ICP and you're watching this, I implore you, go see ICP live in any capacity. These shows are some of the greatest live shows you can ever experience. Not to mention, watching Shaggy launch off these fagos was pretty cool. They rocked the crowd, they did some awesome tracks, and yeah, they just killed it all around. As soon as it was done, we hurried over to the Blast Off stage to check out the comedy stylings of Uncle Jeff, aka Sean Barrett, as well as famous jackass Zach Holmes. The entire crowd loved it, and the set ended with Zach butt chugging a bottle of orange fago. To make matters even weirder, they threw the used bottle into the crowd, which I promptly ran over and picked up. I now have this bottle on my collection shelf. We finished the night with R.A. the Rugged Man and DJ Lala. This set was a great finish to night two. Right before heading out for night two, we checked my porta potty. We waited a firm 10 minutes for it to open up, but got tired of waiting and just called it a night. We showed up day three and immediately went to my toilet. It was still locked, but then we noticed something. The lock itself was red, but the door wasn't closed, meaning we waited all that time the night before for no reason. Other than some new graffiti, the porta potty was pretty clean, but that's honestly not a bad trick to remember if you want to keep a clean porta potty for yourself. The first act we checked out was someone we were pretty excited to see, and that would be Face Tat Mammy. Now listen, I gotta be honest. We kinda went as a joke since she had a unique look, but honestly, she did a pretty damn good job. She had tons of good tracks for the women, and I unironically enjoyed the set. She also gave a shout out to Lorena Bobbitt, which I enjoyed a lot because John Wayne Bobbitt is a bitch. I went into this prepared for a joke, but I left a fan. Godspeed, face tat. After this, we checked out the Juggalo Newlywed game. This game played like the Newlywed game, but featured Juggalo-themed questions such as, what is your partner's favorite Joker's card? Each team got a prize, with fourth place getting a trophy, 
Third place getting a bag of sex toys, second place getting a glass penis, and first place getting a meet and greet with the insane clown posse. The game was great and I was pretty happy this couple won because they were pretty cool. Over at the main stage was the Hatchet Man Project, which was a metal band who remade famous ICP tracks. I'm not the biggest fan of metal, but they did a good job. After them was one of my favorite acts of the entire thing, which was Whitney Payton. Whitney Payton is a white female rapper who the Juggalo crowd has plenty of respect for. She had great crowd interaction, not to mention some pretty awesome tracks which everyone enjoyed. People moshed, stormed the stage, and even crowd surfed her in a pool. All in all, she was one of my favorite performances of the gathering, and I can't wait to see her live again. Up next was Ritz, who also had a pretty sick set with a packed crowd to witness it. That was then followed by the Juggalo Cypher Live. This set gave several underground rappers a chance to spit a verse for the crowd. There was one pretty awesome rapper who was actually blind, which I enjoyed thoroughly. I didn't catch his name, so if you do know it, please leave it in the comments below. But right when this ended, I heard a commotion behind me, and I ran over to find two dudes were fighting. I have no clue what this fight was about, and I'm sorry guys, I can't show the fight footage because of YouTube's rules. But let me just say, the shirtless dude ate a couple of punches. We then saw the group Max Sabbath, which is a Black Sabbath parody band who dresses as McDonald's characters. Grimace was fucking horrifying. I was looking forward to seeing this group, but I, I gotta be honest, it was a bit of a letdown. In my opinion, they should have focused more on the comedy aspect of the thing instead of spending a majority of the show doing the songs. They weren't bad, but it just felt like it got old after a little while. But Clownvis did have a shining moment on stage. The next act was arguably the most commercially successful act of the gathering, Yellow Wolf. As you might expect, Yellow Wolf rocked the house. I did get hit with an unopened beer can during the set though, but you know, sometimes that shit happens. Yellow Wolf was another amazing set, but that should be no surprise to anybody. I went to take a pee, and the urinal had a few new pieces of graffiti, piss everywhere, a clogged urinal, as well as wet rolls of toilet paper on the ground. The final main stage act of Night 3 was Ouija Mac. Ouija Mac is the founder of Chapter 17 Records, which is a sub-label of Psychopathic Records. Ouija Mac takes that juggalo shit and blends it with a more modern rap and sometimes even trap style of music. He's not my cup of tea, but he's still worth checking out because he might be yours. We finished by checking out Mad Child, who is someone I've enjoyed for a long time. However, I could do without the Tom McDonald collapse. There was a pretty funny moment though where he asked for women to get on stage, to which a literal child got up there with him. Luckily someone noticed and quickly got her off the stage. And that's really good because the song he did was not appropriate for children in the slightest. Crisis averted. But I don't really understand why people bring little kids to this thing. Like, I can kind of get 14 and up, but why anyone would bring a literal child to this event is beyond me. But all that aside, it was past our bedtime. So we decided to call it a night so we could get sleep for the final day. Well, day number four, our final day at the gathering. I needed to get $40 out for some merch I wanted and decided to do it at the ATMs on site. Basically, I just wanted to see how much the extra charge was and the surcharge was $7. So yeah, I would highly suggest getting money out elsewhere. We went to the blast off stage to check out the netting game, which is the dating game for Juggalos. Five lucky contestants got to compete for a date with Uncle Juff, as well as a backstage pass for ICP. The questions included knowing what their kinks were as well as the twerking challenge, which ended with this lucky lady winning the date. They also did a version where five lucky guys played for a date and a backstage pass as well. This group of guys was a melting pot, but ultimately, this juggalo won the game and celebrated by showing us his butthole. We moved our chairs a bit closer for the mystery seminar, but suddenly, the back of the tent started throwing shit at the front of the crowd. The front of the crowd started throwing shit back. I got hit with some egg salad or something, so yeah, I had to get out of there. I went back in to record for a minute, and a huge trash fight had broken out. I can't even begin to describe the smell in this tent, since someone was throwing fart bombs. A lot of people had to leave the tent, including me. We decided to leave and go check out my toilet, which the only new thing was some graffiti on the door. We walked around for like 20 minutes, and headed back to the tent thinking things might have calmed down. The trash fight was still fucking happening. The ground was covered, it smelled like shit, people were still throwing shit, and this dude nailed someone in the head with a bottle. This shit went on for a really, really long time. I got out of the tent, but as the mystery seminar started, someone sprayed a fire extinguisher inside the tent. People started getting out the tent and several people were coughing and masking up. 
But the trash fight and the dust everywhere didn't stop the mystery seminar, which ended up being a surprise performance by Shaggy 2 Dope and the three-headed monster. The surprise performance was pretty good, but afterwards it started raining, so we took cover and took a few shots. Once it stopped, we went and saw TSO Ghostly, and don't be fooled by the crowd size, this dude brought his A-game. I really enjoyed his set, and like Clockwork E, I'm curious what the future for him will look like. Up next was one of the main groups I was looking forward to seeing, Belushi Speedball. Belushi Speedball is a thrash metal group heavy into audience participation. They throw shit in the crowd, and the crowd throws back. At one point, they had a guy in a bear costume running through the crowd while throwing bags of powdered sugar at us, saying to throw the coke at Cocaine Bear. They also had this foam gun shooting the entire crowd with foam. Yeah, Belushi Speedball was one of the best acts to see live, and it wouldn't shock me to see them play main stage in the coming years. So after that, we went and sat in the grass to watch Nine Dead, and then went to our spot to check out Alien Ant Farm. The crowd loved Alien Ant Farm, and they were really good. They also ended with Smooth Criminal. I mean, what else could they end with? After that set, I heard another commotion, so I ran over thinking it was another fight. But to my surprise, it was just a pinata. Some guy filled up this pinata with shit and let random people take their swings at it. It was pretty random finding this, but it was cool seeing how people made their own fun. The pinata had random merch in it and even a couple of joints and whatnot. I personally got a shirt from the pinata. It's an adult small, so I'll never fit it, but at least I got it from my wall. Shout out to whoever did this pinata. But not long after, Chris Calico took the stage, and I'm a huge fan of Chris and think he's highly underrated. His spot on main stage was well deserved. After that, we retreated to the legendary Sugar Hill Gang. The crowd was excited to see them, and so was I. After that, we ran and grabbed a slice of pizza, and let me say this. This pizza truck was a lifesaver for us. Some of the best food and some of the best prices at the gathering, I highly suggest eating at this truck if you ever go. We then saw City Morgue, but just a few days before, they had announced that Zillicami wouldn't be there. Sus Muller, or however you pronounce it, still did a pretty good job, but ultimately, not having Zella there was shitty. I mean, still, great act, great show, great time, what can I say? And then began the waiting game for the final act. As time went by waiting, the crowd got more rowdy. Remember, these fireworks aren't part of the show. These are just being set off by the fans in the crowd of fans. Finally, Insane Clown Posse took the stage. And I do not say this lightly. This concert was one of the most intense concerts I have ever seen. People were throwing shit. There were fireworks going off. The bass was insane. Again, make sure you see ICP Live at some point in your life. It was the craziest concert experience of all time. Towards the end, they brought out Esham as well as Ouija Mac. And at the very end, there was a large stage rush. Everyone got on stage and started partying. And in my opinion, this was the perfect way to end the show. I'm going to say it again. This experience is easily one of the craziest things I have ever seen. Everyone was covered in soda. This random dude asked me for a hug and it was just a good time overall. Honestly, I felt honored to have been able to experience this four day event. And at $230 a ticket, I would say it was worth every fucking cent. Oh yeah, before we left, we checked my toilet one last time. Somebody shit on the seat. You got a small fucking cock, bitch! You got a small fucking cock!